So you've conducted your experiment, you've got your data, you've calculated the mean, you've done the comparisons, and now you've been asked to, to calculate your inferential statistics, but there's one problem. What are they? So in this video I'm going to explain, I'm just going to address two key questions about inferential statistics. Number one, what are they? We can't go past um, knowing what they are. And then second, and I think this is the most important one for beginning psychology students, why we use them. If my students know nothing else about inferential statistics, um, but they, they understand why they're used, that's really what I'm looking for um, because of the limited time that we have, especially in IB psychology, to look at inferential stats. The, the concept is quite abstract, so I'm going to start with a, a concrete example. I, I want to imagine, I want you to imagine that I, I've created a drug. My, my drug's called Rememberol, which is going to help you with your exams. Hence the name Rememberol. And, but the problem is, right, I need some evidence. Before I can go selling this, marketing it, I need to find some evidence that it works. So I'm going to design a clinical trial. Right? I'm going to take 10 students, 10 participants, and for half of their exams, end of your exams, they're going to take Rememberol, and the other half of their exams are going to take a placebo. And then we're going to do the comparison. So my research hypothesis is that taking remember I was going to increase their scores, right, if we compare that to the comparison. Uh, but also with my null hypothesis, I'm going to say there's no significant difference, or if there is a difference, it's going to be due to chance. When we're using inferential statistics, uh, we do need our research in our null hypotheses because this is what we're testing. Okay, so um, we'll come back to this in a little bit. But let's imagine I've conducted my study, right, and I've tested Rememberol and the placebo, and here's what happens, right? When the students took Rememberol, they got, on average, 70%. They took a placebo, they got 60%. Now, if I didn't go any, any further past this, this is looking pretty good, right? You might be thinking, man, this drug, you know, I might buy me a packet, I need to get some. You got a 10% increase in your exam scores when you take this drug. But, but it's just a little bit of a problem. So if we, let's look at the raw data. Okay, these are my participant scores. So this is what they, they scored on their subjects over here when they took the drug, and this is when they were the subjects where they were just taking the placebo. All right, so again, the averages are looking pretty good, 70% compared to 69. But let's look at it a little bit more closely. Here we can see actually half of my participants did better on the placebo. Right, they actually, they actually scored higher. So five out of 10 scored higher taking the placebo than a rememberol. Now suddenly, these percentages don't look so strong. The, the evidence now is that, well, hang on, it, it does, is this really working? Is rememberol really working? And in a nutshell, this is why we're using inferential statistics, to, to see how um, significant our data is, right, and how reliable it is. So if we're just looking at 10 participants, it's kind of easy to eyeball this and go, well, hang on. But we do want to be precise. When we're using statistics and psychology we, and we're using quantitative data, we want to have cons precise conclusions. And also, imagine if I had 1,000 participants or 10,000 participants. I wouldn't be able to just eyeball the figures like this. And this is why we use the tests. So what are the inferential statistics? There, there are statistical tests that are testing for statistical significance of the results. Okay, So in this case, you know my results of the 70% versus 60%. Are they statistically significant? And what does that mean? This means that, and this is a quote from BPS, I'll put the link to a good article in the um, description where you can uh, read more about this if you're interested or if you need more clarification. But statistical significance is the likelihood that a given set of results being obtained if the null hypothesis were true. And that sounds a little bit tricky. So let's come back to my remember all example. All right, so What's the likelihood that remember all exams were higher, but my null hypothesis is still true? So even though they got a higher result, my, my null hypothesis that, you know, it's, it's just like there's no significant difference, it's just chance, other factors. What's the, what's the probability that that's still the case, even though there's a difference in the scores? And we allow 5% chance, right? So when we talk about statistical significance, we're looking at the magic number five, we're saying we have a probability value of 5%. We phrase it as a decimal, 0 0.05. What this is saying is that our results are significant if there's less than a 5% probability that our null hypothesis is true. So regardless of the results that we got, for example, 70% versus 60%, we're saying we're going to accept a 5% chance that the null hypothesis is true. We can take a 4%, maybe a 1%, maybe a 0.1%. There's a 0.1% chance that null hypothesis is true despite the results. Fine, brilliant, great, excellent. What if there's a 6% chance the null hypothesis is still true? We can't accept it. Our results are not significant. We need a cutoff point, and that cutoff point is at 5%. All right, so that, then our results will be not significant. So if we come back again to our remember example. 
Um, <clears throat> we've got 70% versus 60%. Now what I would do uh, is I would plug my data here into the calculator, online calculator, or you might be doing it by hand. Um, in another video, I'll, I'll go step by step through how you use the calculators and what you're looking for, how to interpret the results and how to write them up. But this is just a quick introduction. But so in my online calculator, right, I would put my scores over here, condition one and condition two, and it's a 0 0.05, that's my significance level. I'm doing a one tail test and I hit calculate and then I get this result spitting out down here and we can see that uh, our result is not significant at probability 0 0.05. And that's not hard to, to, um, to see why, right? Because half of my participants actually had a higher result on the placebo. And so what these results are saying, if we can look at, look at this result here, zero, the p-value is 0 0.1. Now what that means is that there's a, um, here is 0 0.1, 0 0.102. There's a 10.2% chance that my null hypothesis is true. Luck or something else caused the difference is not the remember all. That's what they're saying. And that 10.2% is too high, right? If that was 4.2% that my null hypothesis is still true despite the difference in the scores, then my results are significant. I'm going to take 4%, but I can't take a 10% chance that my null hypothesis is true, even though this is what on the surface my scores are. Okay, and so that's what inferential statistics are. We're calculating these tests to see what's the likelihood that my null hypothesis is true, even though on the surface, right, I've got these differences in my condition. Okay, and so this is, um, this is what we're testing for when we use inferential statistics. So because I'm at a 10.2% chance that my null hypothesis is true, right, this is higher than five, I have to accept the null hypothesis. Right, I, I, I cannot, um, I have to reject my research hypothesis, I can't accept my research hypothesis even though this looks like it's fine. Now, I hope that clarifies things. We come back to original questions, what are inferential statistics? I hope that clarified that for you. There are statistical tests, we apply to data um, to test their significance. And then why do we use them? Uh, is because we, we need to see that our um, results are reliable and valid and to the extent to which we can uh, reject our null hypothesis, that the differences observed in our results are actually because of the manipulation of the independent variable. Alrighty, <clears throat> now if you need more information, um, uh, of course I'm going to be biased here, I'd say you can't go past uh, my textbook for the students doing IB Psychology and the internal assessment, it's got every lesson laid out for you and all the instructions, what tests to use, um, how to write them up, um, so it's got everything there and if um, for teachers I would also recommend this book this has uh, a lot of good information and it's got the the tables the value tables that you can use when using um, inferential statistics right I've got my copy sitting right here uh, I think this is a good book to have I'll put a link in the uh, description um, to Amazon for that book as well but I think that's a good one for teachers to have on their bookshelf high school students I don't think you need that one Right, um, so coming up, uh, I will also make a step-by-step um, -step guide on inferential statistics, how to use them for your IA, um, and fre fre frequently asked questions about that. Uh, and also, I'm working on a support pack for teachers. Um, I'll put a link to our store on the blog. Um, by the time you're seeing this, it might already be out, so go and check out our store, see if you can get that pack. Uh, there'll be lots of resources in there, like an example IA, checklists, um, lesson plans. This PowerPoint that I've just been using here to explain this, I'll also include that in the pack, so you can explain it yourself to your own students. You can modify it, adapt it um, for your own wishes. Other resources we've got, right? Subscribe to our blog, Facebook group, um, a store. I'll put that all in the comments. So. Thank you for watching uh, and I hope that was helpful. Cheers.